Hey guys, it's Roman from Tintech. Today I will show you how you can create this 3D print time-lapse animation in Blender. I know it's a long tutorial, but if you've done it once, you'll be able to do it in 5 to 10 minutes. You will need Prusa Slicer, Blender and After Effects or any other video editing tool. In Prusa Slicer, we will import and slice a model, then export the main toolpath and then a separate one for the support structures. I chose this cute elephant model for this tutorial. It's made by 3D Printy and you can download it on printables.com. I've put the link to it in the video description. If you want to do multicolor like me, you have to switch to a multicolor printer. Let's import the elephant. It's not necessary, but I'm activating supports to cover this part too. Now hit slice and open the legend in the upper left corner. Here we can switch different parts of the toolpath on and off. Let's deactivate everything except the main model and then switch to color print. This is necessary because we need the color information in the exported file. To export toolpath go to file, export and then export toolpath as obj. Now we need to do the same but for the support structure and the white tower. Make sure to save it as a different file. Also write down the total layer number for later. Now let's switch to Blender where we will import and prepare the model, then add the materials and set up the scene. After that we will set up the animation and make the camera work as intended and render. At last we will re-render a small part of the animation for a smooth fade transition. You can see every button I press in the bottom left corner. Let's import both files that we just have created in Prusa Slicer. For that, choose File, Import and then Wavefront OBJ. As you can see, the orientation is a bit off. With the model still selected, hit R, X and then type minus 90. Now let's delete this floating part on the wipe tower. For that, select it and go into Edit Mode with Tab. Now hit Set to change the view to wireframe, select the unwanted part with B and delete it. Now we have two ways to make the animation. You could just use a build modifier, but I've experienced cleaner results with using the boolean modifier. So let's prepare that way by adding a cube with Shift A. Now scale it up with S and move it to roughly the right place by pressing G. You can enter the top view by hitting 7 on the numpad. Now enter the side view with 1 on the numpad and move the cube into the exact position. You can limit the movement to the set axis if you press G and then set. With the cube in place activate a new key set. Go to frame 0 and make a new keyframe with I. Now we need the layer number from Prusa Sizer and move the timeline to that frame. Let's move the cube to the top of the uppermost layer. And make a keyframe again by pressing I. One last step to finish the preparation is to set the cube's interpolation mode to linear in the graph editor. To verify that the cube is moving correctly you can zoom in and move the timeline frame by frame with the arrow keys. It should exactly move one layer per frame. Let's hide the cube with H. It's time to make it look fancy. For that we switch the render engine to cycles. And set the noise threshold to 0.1 and the samples to a low number to save on render time. Select the main model and go to the shading tab. In here you can change the materials to the right color and play around with the other settings to make it look like plastic. I'm just turning the roughness down, but you can spend a lot more time on this part, but as it is only for a tutorial, I keep it simple.
You can switch between materials with this drop-down. You don't have to make it twice, as you can switch between materials in the Material tab of each object. Let's switch back to the Layout tab. On the top right corner you can choose Material View to see the correct colors. Now let's add some light. For good natural light we can add an HDRI as background, which lights up the scene. You can get high quality HDRIs for free on Polyhaven. I will use this one captured in a house, but you can use whichever you like. Make sure to get the lowest resolution to save on render time as we only need it for lightning. Once you've downloaded it, switch to the World tab and add it here. If we switch to Render View, we can look at the Render Preview. To make sure that it is not visible in the final render, go to the Render Settings tab and choose Transparent in the Film Settings. To spice up the scene a little bit, I added a build plate, a table and a background. I will not cover this part in this tutorial as it would get too long. They are basic shapes with a texture applied, you can do whatever suits you needs. Or leave it with a transparent background. In between I've also added a camera. You can do that with Shift A. You can access the camera by pressing 0 on the numpad. To make the camera placement easier, press N to access the side panel and go to View and choose Camera to View. The camera is now locked to your view and you can place it looking at the model. Time for a test render. Make sure you disable the cube from rendering. You can start the render with F12. For now, this looks alright to me. Now let's make the animation work. Select one of the two objects and go to the Modifiers tab. Add a boolean modifier and make sure it's set to Difference and choose the cube. Do the same for the other model. I suggest setting the solver too fast as it decreases the final render time. Now let's animate the camera. Place it in your preferred starting position. Set the frame to 1 and make a keyframe with I. To work a bit faster you can disable the boolean modifiers in object mode. Now let's go to a frame somewhere after the end frame of the animation and place the camera where you want it to stop. Then make a keyframe with I. If you scroll back the timeline, you might end up with the model not always in view of the camera like me. To fix that we can add some in-between keyframes. Just choose a frame where it doesn't fit and adjust the camera placement and add a keyframe with I. You can do that as many times as you want or need it. One is enough in my case. I decided to change the camera's interpolation mode to linear in the graph editor. You can choose whatever you want, just play around with it. If you have a model without supports, you're pretty much done now. In my case, I want to fade the supports away after the timelapse is finished. So let's choose a frame after the animation and add a keyframe for the render visibility. You can just hover over the icon and hit I. Now let's move one frame and disable the visibility and make another keyframe. 
to get a good view of the finished model, I set another keyframe on the camera. Now let's quickly adjust the settings for the final render. I decided to go with 1024 samples. At the render settings, make sure to set the end frames to a number that covers all of the animation. Make sure to choose a picture format as output and set your destination folder. To render the animation, go to render on the top left corner and choose animation. Now this will take a while. After the render is finished, we need to re-render a tiny section of it. For that, select the support object and delete the keyframes with X. Now set the start frame to a frame where the first keyframe was and the end about 40 frames higher. Make sure to choose a different folder as output, otherwise you'll overwrite the already rendered images. Now render the short part of the animation. To finish, let's switch to After Effects. You can do this in any other video editing software. Drag all the rendered images into your project and right click them to create a composition from the selection. Choose your desired frame rate. Now let's import the frames from the second render and do the same. Now place the second composition at the corresponding frame and make two keyframes. The first with 100% opacity and the other one with zero. This will result in a smooth fadeaway of the support structures. Render it and you're done. Now just to mention, this way of doing such time lapses is very heavy on computing, but it's the way I figured out works best for me. There are surely other options to do this, but this one is for free and if you don't use it on a daily basis, I think it's a plausible way to achieve good enough results. Thank you for watching and feel free to ask questions and give feedback in the comments. I've also made a subreddit where you can post pictures or videos of potential problems. It's linked in the description. If you want to see how horrible ChatGPT is in generating G-code, check this video. But for now, I will say goodbye.